Hi, it's always good. Yes, well, I'm Chris Romain, and I'm joined by Debbie Berry. We're both of University Circle Incorporated, which is the Ed's Meds and Arts District of Cleveland, Ohio, the fastest growing employment district in Ohio. And um, we're glad to be here to talk about uh, a BRT project, which is actually a quarter success story. Um, I think, as we all know, as you know, um, we, we heard just a moment ago, as commercial corridor is going to so go to your city. Really, the health of a commercial corridor uh, reflects on the health of your community. So I'm going to talk uh, very quickly, and Debbie's going to fill in on the actual mechanics of our BRT, but I'm going to talk about uh, what Cleveland did and the vision for the Euclid corridor. It's good to be back in Philadelphia, next, to, next city for having us. So Cleveland, a classic uh, legacy city in America, uh, once the fifth largest uh, city in our country. Uh, where streetcar was king, where pedestrian street life on Euclid Avenue uh, was just commonplace. Euclid Avenue had the highest concentration of millionaires on any main street in America at the turn of the last century. Um, you know a little bit about the story, uh, but Uptown University Circle, this is where uh, University Circle is today. This is uh, the place where, well, Bob Hart Hope got his start in Vaudevillian Theater. Uh, the creators of Superman were busy creating the Superman comic strip down the street. Uh, this was life in University Circle, which is about four and a half miles of, uh, up from uh, the downtown area. It's a corner of two hubs. Uh, the faster growing today is University Circle, but downtown is about 120,000 workers on an everyday basis. So what happened between us? That was a streetcar that ran between downtown and University Circle. Um, and unfortunately, regrettably, like a lot of American cities, we trashed our streetcars. Uh, we just literally trashed them, as the pictures reflect. We sold off uh, the Great American Streetcar in Cleveland, where all of our commercial quarters had streetcars, uh, to uh, a great city like Toronto. Uh, in 54, we literally sold our cars, 75 of them, to one district of Toronto alone, uh, and Toronto went on to become a transit-friendly mecca, right? Um, what did we replace it with? You know a little bit about the story. We started ushering in the rubber tires. Uh, you know a little bit about the story with General Motors and others who uh, were advocating for uh, their product in cities like ours. So we moved from transit uh, that was streetcar in form uh, to bus, which isn't necessarily a bad system until the tires kept coming and the parking lots started coming, and then you have this, and so goes your American main street. The sprawling megalopolis is upon us. Uh, that's the Cleveland story, a, a city that sprawled from its main street and the devolution of a great American street. So this is a story of the rise, the fall, and the rise again of a great American street. This is the picture of Euclid Avenue just at the precipice to the Euclid Corridor Improvement Project that we envisioned about a decade ago. Uh, it was, again, to connect two hubs. The minute we sold our streetcars to Toronto in 54, we regretted it. We tried to build a subway, then we tried to build uh, at grade rail, and then we uh, rested upon an idea that we found in Curitiba, Brazil, for bus rapid transit. So a little bit of a hybrid between streetcar and bus, and Debbie's going to talk about that vision. <laughs> I'm just going to talk a little bit about the details of the transit itself. The idea had been around for 50 years, actually, to connect these two hubs together, but it really took the Federal Transit Authority's New Starts program for this project to come to a reality. Started in 2005, completed in 2008. And what was this project? It really is creating a bus, a rubber tire bus, with the efficiencies and the cost effectiveness of a bus that acts like a rail. Faster, smoother, something that people were willing to ride on to bring that economic development to the corridor itself. The project itself is five miles long between the two hubs. It's actually seven and a half miles in total. 36 brand new stations, a uh, huge investment on the street itself. From building face to building face, the entire right-of-way was torn up and rebuilt, put in trees, put in irrigation systems, put in streetscape, put in artwork, put in bike lanes, really created a new opportunity for a lot of economic development into the future. Again, some of the things that came along with this rail-like characteristic were reduced travel times, an exclusive bus lane and bus right-of-way, traffic signal prioritization, off-board fare collection to make it act more like a rail as opposed to a bus. Service was increased, which we've seen dramatic impacts already. The service uh, for the four years it's been in place has gone up 75% from about 9,000 riders four years ago to over 16,000 a day today because of these improvements on the system. There were new stations put in place. The one uh, you see there is downtown for left side boarding, and the one on the bottom right is a smaller version for right side boarding because the right of ways are smaller in the University Circle neighborhood. Precision docking and at grade boarding makes it easier for people to get on and off the bus. Uh, it happens the same every single time. And a brand new 60 foot articulated hybrid electric bus was created that has 
full sideboarding to accommodate the two stations and the two different right-of-ways, and again, to give you that feel that it's more of a train-like operation. Our duet continues. I want to talk quickly about the impact in one big neighborhood, University Circle, but first, to the Center for Transit Oriented Development. This is their quote on really make, what makes for a transit corridor. When we wanted to introduce the concept, and they have as well, along Transit-oriented development is one thing. Transit corridor development is a whole other thing, but it still is about the walkable areas around the stations. So we envisioned a five-mile transit corridor uh, in its development orientation. Uh, you know, introducing bikes back to the main line, uh, seeing people literally uh, of all different backgrounds actually riding transit, not just our transit dependent, but those who are choosing transit, that's a success story. The destination connector that this is, there's a couple of different types. There's a commuter corridor, there's a district circulator, but ours was a destination, again, hub to hub, which means you have on any day basis people going back and forth from the downtown central business district to the research district, and a lot of us visiting our lawyers and accountants from the Ed's Men's district downtown, but it works. So it wasn't enough to build transit. To build a really, truly great corridor, you had to bring back that street in all forms, in its development form and its activity form. So we spent uh, our investment on 20 blocks. Debbie and I both came from City Hall when this project was being built. I was the planning director and she was at City Planning. We went out to University Circle when a new mayor arrived. We said, we're going to help this, uh, this district with a corridor improvement in our 20 blocks. This was University Circle again. And what we found is we find a bit of our future in our past. Uh, as was said earlier, it's not just a perfect recreation of the past. It is actually about uh, finding your future in your own new century way. But you look to the cues of the past of how you want to rebuild the neighborhood, which meant infill development first. But this is the line as it runs up through Euclid. Uh, you can see, obviously, it is uh, a better street than it was when we left off just at the precipice of the design. One thing that we worked on was getting our campuses uh, to consider focusing on the street. Literally, our hospitals had walls off from Euclid Avenue. These aren't as perfect to the street as we would necessarily want them, but they put urban parks in front, and they actually created a more vital place for uh, their workforce to actually uh, recreate. This is about a, a block up. This is a, a hotel that we just built uh, right around the corner from that uh, hospital, which, again, brought a building uh, out to the street. And in the commercial quarter, everything was hitting the street. We, uh, brought forth uh, a renovation plan for one of these great historic resident hotels, uh, you know, refurbished the retail on the street, 198, that's actually project-based subsidized housing, uh, Section 8 housing, that is a wonderful attribute in a neighborhood amidst students and workers, and that's a park across the street, actually, so about creating uh, urban pocket parks, what makes a street great? It's about places to congregate with friends at lunch or otherwise. These were surface parking lots. So we said to this developer, bring this, obviously this building, right to the street, a new bookstore, a new grocery store, 114 new units of housing in the next phase coming up. But you get the sense that Euclid Avenue is changing alongside its transit. And we owned the lots as a land bank, actually, in the neighborhood, and actually you know, sold them off for development to create a better vitality. This was just, at one point, one public uh, uh, art uh, installation, and it became the Museum of Contemporary Art. Uh, on that main line. You started to see that nonprofits wanted to be around the main street, as did for profits. So, Mocha Cleveland, the Museum of Contemporary Art, wanted to come to the main street because we actually set the table. So did housing developers. This was just a vacant lot that was parking cars on a daily basis, and ultimately we're building new townhomes uh, around the district. Uh, affordable housing. This is one of our great success stories. Architecturally, it's not the most significant thing, obviously, in the neighborhood. What it is is worker housing from workforce that is walking to university hospitals in case your clerical workers, your $30,000 a year worker that's walking on the health line because they want to be near the place. But it was introducing housing to the neighborhood. Uh, again, this is going to be the second phase of that uptown project, but parking lots are now rendered over to development. And actually, that uh, surface lot in the foreground there is uh, just broke ground in the second phase. We're going to have an urban bowling alley, a side a grocery store, a side uh, a, a bookstore. People want to be in this interesting place. By the way, a bookstore in the new economy only happens when a university subsidizes it, which is happening. So, anyways, this is the picture of investment. And the, the DOT director, FTA directors, have been out several times to Cleveland. Why? They're celebrating the story of a return on investment of 30 private dollars to every one public dollar that's invested. Six billion in the five and a half mile corridor has come uh, to the area for a $200 million public investment. And now, taking note, our, our, not just our own local news, but obviously uh, our national news. So what are the lessons learned for crafting a new corridor like Euclid? 
Uh, well, one is you have to have an organization that's doing aggressive land assembly. I mean, not every city is as uh, wonderfully chalked with buildings on every corner as Philadelphia. Ours were surface parking lots, uh, you know, all around Cleveland. I know you've got them here as well. But we had to assemble that land to rebuild it. Obviously, you guys are planners. You're in the know about all this. But to anybody else we talk to, it's about mixed use. Obviously, it's about design standards. And, you know, a developer can't just come in and build in the old way of putting the thing back on the, uh, the back of the lot. Form-based uh, code is king. TOD agreements with developers. Prioritization of density, not a dirty word. Less parking requirements. We herald that. More bike facilities. We herald that. Uh, again, making it a campaign, an all-city campaign, across your sectors of support. Planning your campuses to the street, housing, 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 to the earlier point creates a density you want to support the retail, and changing habits and lifestyles. Bottom line, when the suits get on transit, you've got a success story, and that's what uh, we espouse. Uh, you can't forget the management plan, so make it clean, safe, and attractive once you build it. And finally, uh, enhance it with other amenities, so signage, uh, lighting, that's all been our work as a nonprofit complementing the public agency in the city we work in. And the great American story is this. This was an empty building, actually many decades forgotten, an old bank building that actually has found new life because University Circle worked with downtown on the health line to bring seasonal programming out this holiday season. And then the county bought it and said, hey, we want to make that as our new headquarters. Why? Everybody sees Euclid as a success story that they want to bring their real estate to the main street. That lower right photo is a photo just looking north toward Euclid. Everybody wants to dine around a place where residents are finally living and there's actual street vitality anchored by the transit that was brought forth. And these are the final headlines, both locally and nationally. A rebirth locally of a great American street and the resurgence in Cleveland because of it. Thank you very much.